Ibis Paint has awakened the animation bug inside of a lot of people, myself included. What the hell? <laughs> My small and chovy brain greatly appreciates the simple and clean interface of Ibis Paint animation. By popular demand, I will draw Raiden Shogun from Genshin, aka the Electro Mother, for today's video. And by popular demand, I mean three people have asked me. In the animation canvas, you might notice that the quality is not HD, so your drawing might be a little pixelated. But that's normal, because the higher the quality, the more it takes up space on your device. The same thing applies to higher FPS. I will quickly paint Raiden Shogun with bald, because a bald head is crucial in drawing hair, trust me. In my previous video, I used cell shading method to draw, because the thought of having to paint semi-realistic and animating it makes my brain shudder. Ugh. But then again, maybe it won't be so bad. We'll find out. I always use pencil graphite for painting, but this is too pixelated, so I'm switching to deep pen hard. By the way, some of you are telling me that the colors become jagged or pixelated like this when you use lasso tool. That's because the canvas size is too small. I normally use 3000 by 3000, but since this is an animation canvas, the size is much smaller. You can simply erase the jagged parts with soft eraser or cover it with soft brush. Okay, you know what? Let's just time skip to where this is finished. How do you make a sound for time skip? <laughs> Ah uh, yes, look at this bald head, smooth like boiled egg. You can't help but wanting to smooch. Anyway, we got our trusty bald head. The next thing to do is draw the hairline. Roughly, the hairline is around the nose height, but you can modify it into your own preference. This is just a very rough measurement. The hairline helps determine the root of the hair or the starting point of the hair, and it's better to place it slightly above the head so the hair doesn't look flat. Because we are going to render this, take care not to draw too many details. But sometimes, we just can't help it, so just do it as best as you can. Okay, now this is very important. We have to separate the hair layers. And I'm not talking about just separating the head from the hair. No, no. We have to separate the hair itself. Fung, you're making no sense! Yeah, okay, let me just demonstrate. When we see Raiden Shogun's hair, we can divide it into four parts. The fringe, the braids, the the uh, the the big hair <laughs> and the back of the hair and also some strands so i guess that's more than four and why do we have to go through all this trouble well guess what your future self will thank you when you're animating this imagine if they're all merged into one layer and then let's say you have to rotate this part yeah something like that just for an example you will have this huge chunk of missing hair and you would have to redraw all of it i'm actually not a fan of using too many layers because i have to pay extra attention so i don't draw in the wrong layer and boy am i bad at paying attention but i don't want to exhaust myself physically and mentally during the animation process so i have to try to pay attention by drinking shit ton of coffee. Let's go through the hair drawing real quick. For me, the easiest way to draw hair is to consider it as ribbons. Some people like to consider them as planes. No, not that one. This one, I think. But I still don't understand. So ribbon it is. I'm sure a lot of you have seen ribbons at least one time in your life. If not, there's internet. Visualizing the hair as ribbons makes it easier to draw because it simplifies the complex strands into bigger shapes. Of course, the size and number of curls may vary depending on the hairstyle you're drawing. If you look at a ribbon, you might notice this pattern in its color. Dark color, light, and then dark color again. You can implement this in your hair shading, but pay attention to the light source because it plays a big role in how the shadows would look. Oh, and by the way, I decided to forego the braids because it looks out of place. I don't know, it looks like a huge caterpillar. And her braids is normally behind her head anyway, so we can remove it from her shoulder. For shading, I use the method called the Hyundai method. Full disclaimer, I'm not sponsored by Hyundai, this is just something my tiny noodle came up with. But anyway, to do so, create some ovals and then erase the top and bottom half. I recommend using low opacity eraser until you get the Hyundai logo. You can just leave it as is, but I will add more details to emulate the hair strands. I have to admit, using cell shading method is much easier and quicker than shading it like this, especially when you need to animate it later on. But sometimes, I just like to test my mental and physical ability. 
I might regret this later. I will render the hair really simply by painting over the sketch. Since the canvas size is small, I will use sharper pen brush instead of my usual painting brush. As you can see, I'm implementing the ribbon colors to the hair. I'm alternating between dark, light, and then dark again. After some contemplating, I decided to create different layers to draw the highlights, because it might move around a lot during the animation process. I realized I should probably do the same thing to the shadings, but it's too late and my brain and device can't handle that many layers. Oh, and I will animate her accessories as well. Is it just me or the hair kinda looks like a wig? Like it, it looks so artificial? It looks like she's wearing a wig. Is it because I'm too accustomed to seeing her bald? Or maybe it's because I forgot to add shadows beneath her fringe? Okay, let me add it real quick. Yeah, okay, that looks so much better. Don't forget to add shadows below the fringe. This is a friendly yet important reminder. But that also means I have more things to animate. Damn it. Okay, before my intrusive thoughts start to add anything else to the drawing, let's start animating. Actually, let me set the onion skin first. The onion skin enables you to see the before and after your current drawing. So let's say you move the hair like this. You can see there's a red area below it and it represents the frame before so your animation is more stable and not all over the place i will first duplicate the frame and as you can see all your layers from the previous frame are still intact very convenient now just pick the part of the hair you'd like to animate let's go with fringe and we're going to make the movement using liquify because i absolutely refuse to hand draw each movement I have my limits. As I mentioned in my previous video, liquify might blur your drawing if you go overboard, so just do it gently. Also, don't just pull random things out of your noodle. If you struggle to visualize the hair movement, look for references, or you will end up with this kind of shit. When I was looking for references, I actually found something called seaweed principle or seaweed exercise. Basically, you're animating seaweed movement when it's swaying back and forth, and it's a great basic exercise before animating hair. I'm not a professional animator. I took an animation class one time and got a C+. Plus. So I recommend watching this video by Dong Chang to learn in depth about the seaweed exercise and hair animation. Their animation is really smooth and it's hand drawn. Holy effing cow. The video is really detailed and easy to follow. I really recommend watching it if you wanna get serious about learning animation. For now, I'm going to try to implement the seaweed principle into my own animation by using liquify. Again, a friendly reminder, liquify will blur your drawing. If you don't like it, you're welcome to manually draw the movement. If you're a lazy piece of seaweed like yours truly, get ready to get blurred. I wonder if I can just copy paste the frames to make her hair move in the opposite direction. We'll see. Alright. Uh huh. Her hair's bouncing like a basketball. I'm starting to remember why my teacher gave me a C- back in college. I'm going to make the opposite movement manually. And by manually, I mean using liquify which results in more blurry painting. Well, at least the hair is not bouncing around. That was embarrassing. Also, during the animation process, I ended up making a blinking animation as well, which means my intrusive thoughts have won and triumph. Also, I'm compensating for my shitty hair animation. It's a bit tedious to repaint her eyelids and eyeshadows. This is why I think cell shading is perfect for hand-drawn animation, because you don't have to blend anything. Oh my god, that's terrifying. I'm setting the frames per second into 30 fps so it looks smoother and also set the play options to one shot so the animation is not looping. Okay, moment of truth. Uh huh. Okay, some thoughts. Honestly, the blinking animation looks decent. The hair animation needs shit ton of work. Fung, you suck! Hey, you think I don't know that? Anyway, if you're serious about learning animation, watch Dong Chang's video. I'm just a goober addicted to blinking animation. Yes, blink. Anyway, that's it. Bye-bye.